The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. When I was a teenager, I was one of those nerdy people who, when there was a movie coming out, I would want to be right there at first in line and waiting sometimes, I would love to have done this, days to be able to get to see a movie. I remember I did that for a couple of movies. The first one I did, I, wanted, I asked my mother, I said, will you let me go line up with everybody else that's gonna be spending nights there because Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark is coming out. This was 1981. Okay, in case you're wondering what year this was, I guess I was probably about 16 or so, and my mom said, there you go, you got it right. She said, are you nuts? Well, actually, I finally, I, I at least twisted her arm enough to be able to say I, I got there about two or three hours before the movie started. And boy, am I glad I did because we had, they were all full and I had to wait another couple of hours to get to the next movie back then, you know. But the movie I actually wanted to see came a couple years later. I, I liked the Raiders of the Lost Ark and then they had that Temple of Doom thing that was kind of, yeah. Uh, but the one I really wanted to see, I knew it was going to be coming out, uh, was Indiana Jones and where he finds the, um, the uh, Holy Grail. Remember that one? Uh, the final, final thing, and of course we know now it wasn't the final thing. But anyway, this was supposed to be the last in this series of, of movies within Indiana Jones. And in that series, I'm not going to tell you all the plot line, because I, I don't want to ruin it for you if you've never seen it. But it's a great movie, Indiana Jones. And uh, so, I, in The Last Crusade, that's, I was trying to remember what it's called, The Last Crusade. And he goes trying to find the Holy Grail. He goes into what is now you and I call Jordan, Petra, technically. I've been there, actually. I went to Petra and got to ride a horse down into that area where this uh, Holy Grail supposedly was. Well, I hate to tell you, but it's not really there. That was in the movie. But in the movie, there's three final challenges. Now, if you remember, how many of you have seen the movie, the last one? Raise your hand. Okay. You remember the movie? Uh, there's three final challenges. Uh, one is a little gory. I won't tell you those first one and two. But the third one is where Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, is standing there on a precipice. And he's looking down into this deep cavern. There, you can't even see the bottom. And so it's so deep. And to get to the other side, there's no way he could take like a running leap to get there. What he does is 
uh, it's, he was told by his, in his father's diary that you have to have a leap of faith. Remember that? A leap of faith from the lion's mouth. So the lion, there's like a lion right there, and he's got a leap of faith. And so what does Harrison Ford, a.k.a. Indiana Jones, do? He starts to take a big, deep breath. And he lets it out. And then he takes another big, deep breath. I think he takes three, if I recall. And uh, in other words, it's almost like, like a balloon. He's trying to build up his lungs full of faith. And then he finally takes that step. And I'm not going to do it here because I'm stepping <laughs> uh, on, on another step here. But you know, he takes that giant leap. He puts his foot way out there in front of him and takes that step. And you, what ends up happening, uh, this is kind of the plot line, sorry. There's actually a bridge you can't see. You can't see even in the movie. He takes that leap of faith to step out into that big unknown bridge, and suddenly that bridge makes its appearance. Now, that was a leap of faith. But today we hear a story also about a leap of faith. We hear the story of Doubting Thomas. Now, I always feel bad for Doubting Thomas. Go, going through history with an adjective uh, like doubter, doubting, Doubting Thomas. There is a theory that, uh, or a legend that says that Thomas, in the end, ended up taking the gospel all the way to what you and I now know as India, farther than any other of the 12 disciples. Think about that. They were all right there in Palestine. Some took the gospel in and around uh, like what we now know as Turkey and Cyprus. But Thomas went the furthest all the way to India. The Church of India today, Martoma Church, is, uh, you hear the word Thomas there, Martoma? St. Thomas is the patron saint of India, okay? And there's a reason why they, they, they trace their heritage all the way back to this story that we just read today. A story of great faith on Thomas's part. But I like to think of it as an evolving faith. And I want to draw your attention to two things in today's gospel. Two phrases that uh, are the same phrase, used twice. I never really kind of paid a lot of attention to it until I was really reading it, and it like, goes like this. Uh, Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus says, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. That's the first time it's used. The second time is John, the writer of this gospel, is saying, uh, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Twice, that phrase is, it's not those who believe, so that you may believe. We always think of belief as kind of static. You either got it, or you don't got it, all right? You either have faith, or you don't have faith. But what I'm suggesting to you is this. When you think back 20 years in your life, or 30 years, or 40 years, or 50 years, and you go way, way, way back, and you remember what your faith was like, say when you were a child, okay? Is it the same faith as today? No. Why? Because I believe faith evolves over time. Our faith changes, just like we change. And that's not a bad thing. Please remember that Thomas was never told, sorry, you can't be a disciple because you don't believe in me, and kicked out of the disciples. No, he was actually said, go ahead, whatever it takes, Thomas, to convince you that I am alive now, do that. If it means putting your finger into the nail prints and your fist into the side, if that's what it'll take to convince you, go ahead and do that, if that will bolster your faith. But... Here comes the blessing for us. But blessed are those who've never seen and still come to believe. What I'm suggesting to you, and this is my point today, is that our faith is always evolving. It's never static. It is always different today than it was yesterday. And you have to kind of look back over years to see that happen. Cooper Harvey will get baptized today. He will not remember this day but he begins his faith journey today. The faith that he has today will evolve as he gets older, as he becomes a youngster, and as he becomes a teenager. Oh boy, get ready. <laughs> and then as a young adult, and then 
as he has a family of his own one day. His faith will change just like yours and mine changes. And that's perfectly fine. That's the way it's supposed to be. A lot of people kind of think, oh, my children, they've left the church. They don't have faith anymore. Of course they do. We all live by faith at some level. The question is, how do we own it? It's not about taking just a big deep breath like Harrison Ford out there taking that step of faith. That may help his faith, perhaps, but that's not how my faith works. My faith is evolving. It's changing. It's different today than it was yesterday. Tomorrow, it'll be different than it is today. And that's perfectly fine. Because as faith changes, so do we. What we discover is the deeper mysteries of who God is. And certainly that's what Thomas discovered on that day. Holy mackerel, how would you like to have been there in that upper room when Jesus invites you to put your finger into the nail prints? Is that what it's going to take? Well, it sounds like kind of a B-grade horror movie to me. It's a little graphic. But it's so graphic, it's at least a reminder we don't have to do that. Our faith is always evolving to be able to say, you know, Jesus, I don't need to prove to myself you're alive again. I just know that you are. I believe that. I believe it down deep in the gut, in the soul, and you can too. We are persons of faith, evolving faith, changing faith, always learning more of the deeper mysteries of God. And Cooper is going to do that too. Let's join him today and watch him, begin to watch him, as his faith begins to evolve starting right on the day of his baptism. God bless you abundantly.